Today's topic is how nitric acid is manufactured in industry. In this video we will understand the manufacturing process of nitric acid through flow sheet diagram and cover all these points. First of all we will know what is nitric acid. Nitric acid is a highly corrosive and strong mineral acid with the chemical formula HNO3. It is commonly known as aqua fortis and is a colorless liquid that has a pungent and suffocating odor. It is highly reactive and is used in various industrial applications such as the production of fertilizers, dyes, explosives, and cleaning agents. If we talk about nitric acid, its properties are as follows. Molecular weight the molecular weight of nitric acid, HNO3, is approximately 63.01 grams per mole. Melting point. The melting point of nitric acid is minus 42 degrees Celsius. This means that at temperatures below minus 42 degrees Celsius, nitric acid will solidify. Boiling point. The boiling point of nitric acid is 83 degrees Celsius. When the temperature reaches or exceeds 83 degrees Celsius, nitric acid will undergo vaporization and convert into its gaseous state. Decomposition. Nitric acid can undergo decomposition at high temperatures, however, the specific temperature at which it decomposes depends on various factors. It is not accurate to state that nitric acid will decompose at 86 degrees Celsius. The decomposition of nitric acid typically occurs at higher temperatures. Specific gravity. Nitric acid has a specific gravity of approximately 1.502. Specific gravity is the ratio of the density of a substance to the density of a reference substance, usually water. A specific gravity of 1.502 indicates that nitric acid is approximately 1.502 times denser than water. And if we talk about methods of production, then nitric acid is manufactured in the industry by ammonia oxidation process method which mainly consists of three steps. First step is oxidation of ammonia to nitric oxide. Second step is oxidation of nitric oxide to nitrogen dioxide. And the third step is absorption of nitrogen dioxide in water. And if we talk about chemical reaction, then all these reactions take place in the production of nitric acid. If you cannot remember all these reactions, then you can write only these three main reactions in the exam because these three reactions are main in the whole production. And to make nitric acid, it mainly requires synthetic ammonia, filtrate air, and platinum rhodium catalyst is required. First of all, we will learn about all the equipments used in the production of nitric acid and then, after that we will understand its working process step by step through diagram. This is an ammonia storage tanker, it contains synthetic ammonia inside. And this is the compressor, the process of compression is done by it, in the process the air is compressed by it. On one side of this compressor the turbine, and on the other side the expander is connected. The compressor is driven by the turbine and the exhaust gas inside the compressor is driven out by the expander. And this is shell and tube reactor. This is mainly divided into converter section, superheater section and heat recovery boiler section. The converter section is on the tube side, and the superheater and heat recovery boiler section on the shell side. Inside it, there are 10 to 30 sheets of platinum and rhodium alloy, which act as a catalyst. If talk about mesh wire gauge size, then it is of 60 to 80 mesh wire gauge, which are inside the tube in the form of layers. And the contact of the gas with the plate is till the power of 2.5 times 10 minus 4 seconds, mean the gas comes down fast. And this is the superheater section, through this the heat energy is passed to the converter, and it also converts the saturated steam into supersaturated steam, which is used as process steam and turbine steam. It means whenever steam energy is required in the process, process steam will be used and turbine steam is used to drive the turbine. And this is the heat recovery boiler section, by which heat energy is converted into steam energy. When ammonia and oxygen react with each other in the converter section, nitric oxide gas is formed. Then heat energy is produced at that time, which is sent to the heat recovery boiler. There is water inside this boiler. As soon as water gets heat energy, then water gets converts into steam energy. 
and this is the catalyst recovery filter by which the catalyst is recovered, that is, it is removed from the gas, we know that the velocity of nitric oxide gas coming out of the reactor is high, due to which the contents of platinum and rhodium alloy also get mixed with nitric oxide, and this catalyst are very expensive, and they can further react inside the tower, due to which the process can be spoiled, so catalyst recovery filter are used. And these are called heat exchanger units, through which heat energy is exchanged or transferred. In this process, the heat energy of nitric oxide gas is transferred. Through them heat energy is transferred to the tail gas by the tail gas heater, and to the condensate water by the steam economizer, because before the nitric oxide gas is delivered to the tower, it is necessary to reduce its temperature, so these heat exchanger units are used. And it is a kind of cooling tower, inside which the process of quenching takes place. In the quench process the temperature of hot gas is reduced with the help of cooling water. In this process, the temperature of nitric oxide gas is reduced. Here the temperature of nitric oxide gas gets very low, and dilute acid is also obtained from here. Dilute acid is a solution that contains 90% water, and 10% acid. And this is the oxidation and absorption tower, there is a process of oxidation and absorption inside it, in this process, there is oxidation of nitric oxide inside it and absorption of nitrogen dioxide, nitric acid is obtained from here. First of all, ammonia is sent from the ammonia storage and compressed air is sent from the compressor to the shell and tube reactor. Here, ammonia and oxygen react in the converter section, resulting in the formation of nitric oxide gas, which exits the reactor and reaches the catalyst recovery filter. In the catalyst recovery filter, the platinum and rhodium catalyst components present in the nitric oxide gas are separated from the gas. The purified nitric oxide gas then proceeds to the heat exchanger unit. The heat exchanger unit is used in this process to transfer the heat energy of the nitric oxide gas to the tail gas and condensate water through the tail gas heater and steam economizer. This helps in reducing the temperature of the nitric oxide gas. The cooled nitric oxide gas is then sent to the cooling tower. The purpose of using a heat exchanger unit is to prevent the wastage of heat energy as heat energy is economically significant in the industry. Therefore, the tail gas heater and steam economizer are employed to make efficient use of the generated heat. Inside the cooling tower, the temperature of the nitric oxide gas is significantly reduced through the quenching process. The gas is then introduced into the tower along with air oxygen from the bottom section. The tower also receives a dilute acid solution consisting of 90% water and 10% acid, which is pumped into the tower from the top section. Within the tower, the process of oxidation and absorption takes place. Initially, nitric oxide and air react, resulting in the formation of nitrogen dioxide. Subsequently, nitrogen dioxide reacts with water, leading to the formation of nitric acid. The solution obtained from the tower contains 60% nitric acid. 